Riverside County, LA County, um, and they really don't understand what that means. The virus is spreading, um, so the CDFA has been up here testing the last couple of weeks. In this human. is a virus that has to do with viral in Newcastle. Animals, it's, right? it, yeah, it's a, it's a poultry disease, poultry and I'll poultry. actually read a little bit about that in a second. So, um, actually, I'll start with that. But I did, you know, they were here testing, and we got a confirmation. Um, called the office in Ontario that on May 23rd there was a positive in our town. We don't know exactly where because they don't uh, usually even tell you that it's in the town. Right. But um, so we do know that. And anyway, so what um, Byron Lake Newcastle is, I'll read a little bit off here, and you can find this on the CDFA website, and we also did print some flyers uh, for that. Basically, uh, it was previously known as exotic Newcastle disease. And um, in 2002, 2003, there was a huge outbreak in California and they killed, what, I think up to four million birds. Right now, they've already destroyed uh, over 1.2 million in just in the last year. And it's getting worse right now. The outbreak's getting worse. Um, so it's a virulent strain of the Newcastle disease virus and is one of the most serious diseases of chickens throughout the world. It's characterized by lesions produced in the gastrointestinal tract or in the brain. And in susceptible chickens, morbidity rates uh, approach 100% and mortality rates may exceed 95%. And what makes it so serious is that any country that has an outbreak, we, it actually affects our trade. And so right now we have tariffs on our trade. We can't export poultry right now. So anyway, the host, for the disease is all birds, <coughs> both domestic and wild, are susceptible to virulent Newcastle disease. The mortality and mor morbidity rates uh, vary drastically between species and with the strain of the virus. In poultry, chickens are very susceptible to this disease, while geese and ducks tend to be resistant. Although, with this strain, there have been several ducks, geese, even some parrots. Again, they're kind of back and forth about exactly what's getting it. Um, and a transmission uh, within an infected flock, uh, the viral Newcastle is transmitted by direct contact, contaminated feed and watering equipment. Um, it can go on our shoes, on our tires. So since, you know, in this community we share veterinarians, we all go to the same feed stores, we all the same tractor equipment we're using on our properties. I think it's so, so very important since the CDFA has not done it, uh, public awareness and education campaign that us as a community, you know, really start to hit this hard and heavy before we're dealing with some of the stuff that they're going with, uh, going through down um, in Riverside County right now. It's, it's, it can be pretty scary. We left information for everybody to start looking that up, and um, we were actually hoping to maybe we could get on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, to come up with some ideas, what we can do to, to get the, the word out. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, they do say they have handouts there. If you go to the CDFA website, they are asking, you know, if somebody finds a sick bird, to uh, call the hotline so it can be tested. Um, but what they're doing, if they do find a positive test right now, they're depopulating uh, a radius, a starting radius, of every bird within 0.62 miles of that positive case. <coughs> so there are a lot of people that have their, these are their pets, not, you know, it's not just their livelihoods or that they're getting eggs or, you know, something like that. I mean, some of these, it's like their dogs. And it's really sad that the children that are losing their pets. Anyway, so we're just hoping that we can really get a jump on this and do something different up here in the high desert and start with biosecurity. There's, uh, you can learn about biosecurity security on the CDFA website, how we can not transfer it to each other, which I think is something we need to teach the community. So, and I think that's about all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, we can help you with getting the word out, <coughs> putting a flyer on our website or something like that. As far as agendizing it, this isn't the type of thing that's really in the subject matter jurisdiction of the CSD, but we are, absolutely uh, able to help with 
getting the word out and communicating and things like that. And I think privately we're going to start putting out flyers, you know, at different places, maybe the post office, the feed stores. Well, I was going to say, like you say, the vet's offices and the feed stores. Right, where we frequent, maybe even where we do rent the equipment and if everybody can just educate sure. themselves and spread the word because we could lose every bird in Zealand or a small town. There would be some other community organizations that might <coughs> appreciate you coming by and speaking to them as well. But some of them are always looking for guest speakers, by the way, like the Kiwanis Club and the Chamber of Commerce and things like that. So that might be, uh, we can work with you with a, a list of those organizations. Okay. Okay. If you need a facility to host meetings, um, you know, meetings in the community, we'd be happy to provide the building for them. You could, you could utilize this room Great. for that type of meeting. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anybody else that you wanted to address? Go ahead. Hi. I just walked in. Come on up. Yeah, you just got here. Yeah, I'm from Paris. I'm not from here. Okay. I'm from uh, Oklahoma. Um, your residence, because I don't know how many of you guys are aware of Blue Castle. Uh, yeah, she was, but I don't know if any of you have prior, been made prior. Okay. Just peripherally. Okay. Um, what we have going on in the Riverside area of Paris, Nuevo, Homeland, Drupa, Mirloma, Norco, um, we have the CDFA basically um, going to people's homes, and um, it's basically acts of domestic terrorism. What they're doing is they're coming in and misleading people. Um, a lot of these folks are in between their citizenship status, and Governor Newsom has declared us a sanctuary state, but these folks are being forced to sign paperwork. Um, and under the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, they aren't being identified for their property. So that's one problem we have. Second problem we have going on, and a little bit about me, I'm a retired law enforcement officer. My husband is a deputy, and we're good people. He's a double uh, combat vet, he's just a veteran. And um, I, I was dealing with the CDFA all week, and I recorded everything with them. And they told me that they were not going to—they did not want to kill my birds. They would not kill my birds, and I have it all recorded. They showed up at my house on Good Friday, and I had a, um, a note from the state vet because we were in correspondence that no action be taken until we spoke. That was at 7:56 on a Thursday night. Friday at one o'clock, they pulled a warrant on my house. And by three o'clock, they were there with my four children, and they slaughtered my pets. And when I say slaughtered my pets, they snapped the necks, they broke legs, they put them in insufficient, inhumane uh, trash cans. So you could hear them half alive, half dead, opening up, closing, and my kids are screaming in terror. I videotaped it all. I have been on NBC, I have been on ABC, I have been on Valley News, I have been on Press Enterprise, because I'm trying to spread awareness. What I'm doing now is I'm kind of on a little bit of a mission to, to stop them from their inhumane euthanasia, and they aren't providing conclusive test results to know even what we're dealing with. Uh, my warrant said that it was uh, Newcastle or influenza. What that means is they had to come up with something that was probable cause. The day when that happened, I had deputies at my home, and I met with my sheriff, who was Chad Bianco, two days prior to, to you know, Community relations, we resolve problems, we tackle them before it becomes a problem. Well, that guy went missing, and I still haven't heard from him. It's been six weeks. I emailed him, I called him, he was supposed to have me in for a meeting, and I still yet to hear from him. So, if anybody knows where he is, you know, hope he's okay. I've spoke with uh, Senator Roth's office, which is our senator. I've met with Melissa Melendez, which is my uh, district rep. I've also met with Tanaka, who is the Mira Loma Jeruka rep, because we have a lot of citizens that are in fear. Um, tomorrow, I have an elderly woman who is a victim of a heart attack. They're coming to slaughter her head. The, she doesn't want to call the police. She's messaged me to be there, so I'll be with her tomorrow in Romola. And I'm having an issue with that because I'm no longer a police officer, I'm a person. But now I'm taking police related calls because they aren't showing up. Law enforcement's deal on this thing is um, we've had Riverside County Sheriff involved. <coughs> So we reached out to one of their POI guys, a Sergeant Ponder, who he kissed it off to Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol re-kissed it off back to them. They kissed it back off to him. He sent me to a sergeant. That guy never called me back. And we sat in limbo for a while, so I got a hold of a lieutenant who was very agitated and basically just hung up on me. My father is Highway Patrol, so now I'm stepping up and dealing with the commissioner on this. Because I have a problem with law enforcement officers that are public servants 
that are not protecting their people. Um, we had an individual um, family in, in Drupa.